Hello everyone and welcome back to Solar System Tourism in Kerbal's Facebook Run 1.8.1 with Realism Overhaul, where I send my Twitch livestream audience to their preferred destination, providing that they pay with the in-stream currency struts, which they earn by watching. We begin with the return of one of those tourists, NST, from the Skylab 2 station in the Dragon 2 spacecraft. And the reason NST is coming back is because NST bought a ticket somewhere else. In particular, uh, we are going to have people landing on the moon first and then heading to Mars. Uh, they decided to do a uh, deal for both, I guess. Anyway, so we have to bring NST back, otherwise NST will not be headed over to the moon. And there will be two other Kerbals who will join NST on that trip. So here we are bringing... Uh, this particular Kerbal Tourist back. Some heating, uh, that uh, particular overheat is the capsule itself. So that is important. But NST makes it through. And there are the parachutes. A reminder, we put extra RCS ports on this dragon so that we could cut down on the burn times to reach the station in the first place. And recovering vessel. After a few clicks. And then I set to work making a lander that can land both on the moon as well as on Mars. So I go with the methane oxygen ED1s, four of them. We've got solar panels, we've got the Lynx spacecraft cabin, an old version of it. And I decide to use the uh, Mars Base Camp mod by Lonesome Robots. And so these are the parts on that. And then we are going to launch it on the enormous Daenerys Aerospike SSTO. And here it is fitted also with its aero braking flaps as well as the Raptor descent pods. We are launching it on the pier for the monument launcher, which the Neris also shares. And here we go. The low earth orbit capacity of Daenerys, which is named after the Game of Thrones character who is the mother of dragons because this seems to be the mother of dragons in, in form. But the capacity is about 880 tons to low earth orbit and we are nowhere near using all of that for this launch. So this is a relatively easy launch. And there we go, ascending. Because it is a single stage to orbit, the ascent path is a little bit different from normal. It's better to go steeper initially and then more horizontal afterwards for a lengthier period of time. And that's because the thrust weight ratio tends to be very high closer to the end. And we don't have that sort of drop off in the middle that a two stage system would have. Okay, so there we are with plenty of delta V left and we have made orbit. And the tiny little, I mean, it's, it looks tiny on the top of Daenerys, but it's still 422 tons. That's a Raptor vacuum engine on the bottom there. And all the fuel tanks that have the foil on them have methane and oxygen. Now, unfortunately, I had forgotten to put RCS ports on the bottom bit. And the only RCS ports are the ones on the Lynx spacecraft and the lander modules. So... That's inconvenient because it doesn't turn this thing very quickly at all. But anyway, we move away from Daenerys and proceed on to the moon. There's the translunar injection happening right here and completing. And then after this is placed on its path to the moon, we bring Daenerys down for once. And so this is it with those air braking flaps out so that it doesn't... So that it gets a lot of drag early on and doesn't heat up too much. As you can see, it still heats up and without those flaps, it would probably explode. In each of the eight Raptor pods, there are two sea level Raptor engines. So that's 16 sea level Raptors that are gonna light in order to try and save this. But unfortunately, I light them too early. Yep, uh, that's way too early. And I also thought that I had more Delta V than that in them. Uh, they have their own fuel. So, yeah. They also have flaps to cover up the Raptors during re-entry. But anyway. The point is that we tried to save it. And it didn't work out because I timed it wrong. So, anyway. Here we are going to the moon. With uh, Blitz, Market Gardener, and NST. The Three Musketeers, as they are eventually called. But... 
When we get to periapsis and need to do the retro burn in order to capture into orbit, I discover that the RCS is not powerful enough to settle the fuel down for the Raptor vacuum engine. So I spent a while trying to spin it around a bit, and that sometimes settles the fuel down, but that didn't work, so I decided to use the ED1 engines. Initially, I think I was trying to capture with them, but ultimately realized, I, maybe somebody in chat mentioned the idea that perhaps uh, they could be used to sell the fuel down for the Raptors. So here I am turning very much the wrong way, <laughs> but uh, if we can light the Raptor, this will be the right way. So... Shutting it down. Can we get a uh, good icon for the Raptor? Yes. So then we can activate that engine. Then we have to shut these off because they're going to counter it. But I decide that we better light the Raptor quickly. And then... They add vapor and feed lines, so that's good. Alright, so they go off and we're using the Raptor. The Raptor is much more efficient than the ED1s, so we definitely want to use it if possible. Okay, so then we captured, but this is obviously going to be an ordeal like this. I transfer some fuel into the lander to make sure that we have the fuel for landing. And then the lander separates off from the rest of the Mars Base Camp modules and the Raptor stage. And here we are landing on the moon, which we haven't done that much actually. There's a lot of people wanting to go to stations in this series, not so much landing on things. But landing is more expensive, so. Anyway, here is the landing burn. And the final bit here. You can sort of see the parachutes on top there, because this is also configured to land on Mars. Potentially, hopefully, we'll see. Okay, so Blitz comes down, and that is Musketeer 1 on the surface. And we sort of line them up. Market Gardener, Musketeer number 2. And finally, NST, who is Musketeer number 3. I think they won, uh, there was sort of a strut based bet on something that happened and they won. So they got suddenly a large inflow of struts that they used in order to buy their tickets. No hanging around though, because of course they need to go to Mars next. But we are a little bit short on fuel in our main spacecraft. We would like to get some more fuel in that and we would like some more RCS thrusters if possible. So after we make this rendezvous, we are going to try to launch something with those things. It was a fairly direct rendezvous. Maybe using a little bit more fuel than we ought to have in order to make that happen quickly. But yes, they got back safely. Since we're already at the moon and close to escape, it's got enough to transfer to Mars. The problem is whether it has enough to capture around Mars, and probably that's a no. So that's why we need to send a little bit more fuel. Not a whole lot more would have been necessary. But yeah, we're not only sending fuel, we are sending an engineer to attach thrusters. And I, I went full overkill on this, though at least we weren't using Daenerys again. Let's look on the bright side. So we've got four nuclear engines um, on a S2 stage filled with hydrogen. And then four M1 engines at the bottom. And then... Uh, boosters with RD-270s. And uh, altogether, each booster has four RD-270s for a total of 16 of them. They're the boosters that were meant for the Monument Launcher. I'm, I'm not... I'm still not entirely sure why I needed all this. I guess I was just in the mood for really big launchers. One the uh, good side effect of it though was the most multicolored plume I've seen so far. The interaction between the plume of the M1 engines, which gimbal there, and the RD-270s seems to create a rainbow effect. The RD-270 boosters do not gimbal, so the M1s are the only ones that are controlling the rocket right now. And as we got higher it started to look more like this. 
It's an interesting effect. It wasn't intentional, but I would like to somehow duplicate it intentionally some sometime in the future. It might be interesting to just create a line of launchers that do that. Okay, so off go the RD-270s. I mean, obviously this is very efficient, so that's not a problem. Uh, might as well get the looks in. But as we finish up the M1 stage, it turns out we don't have enough Delta V here to transfer the moon after we complete orbit with the nuclear engines. We weren't supposed to use the nuclear engines to complete orbit. We were supposed to get into orbit and then light the nuclear engines, you know, for safety's sake. So, more boosters. Uh, it's a rare case where I actually went with more boosters instead of trying to reduce the payload because, again, it seems like I was in the mood for really big rockets. So, we now have, what is it, 32 RD-270 engines? Plus the four M1s? Crazy, really. And off go the RD-270 boosters. Here we are making orbit with the stage as intended. So all right. Part of the problem was low thrust to weight ratio with the previous version and extra boosters did solve that. So now we can transfer the moon and to the moon and we still have enough delta V to capture and which I do. Probably some modifications to the S2 tank would be necessary for that. We also had that extra length of tank on top of it. You can see the striped bit. That's more hydrogen fuel because the S2 tank itself didn't carry enough. So maybe that part could be more properly insulated and the S2 tank, since it's only needed for TLI, would be sufficient for that part. So I had a problem. Uh, it drained the hydrogen from the spacecraft. I had put two Vinci engines to do the further burns here, but we lost the hydrogen, so we couldn't use those, and we had to do everything with RCS, a methane and oxygen RCS. So that was tedious, but doable, just given a lot of time and patience, and a little bit of help from the spacecraft to complete the rendezvous here and so we're just doing that with the ED1s desperately actually but it does happen despite the failure to have the necessary propellant for Da Vinci engines and what you saw me doing with ship manifest earlier was dumping the oxygen that went with the hydrogen because we didn't need it since we couldn't use Da Vinci engines so so we dock, we transfer the methane and oxygen for the Raptor vacuum, and then Bill, our engineer, because none of the other three were engineers, has to try to attach the RCS ports, but I forgot to pack a drill, so we couldn't attach the RCS ports. And now the spacecraft Bill came in on doesn't have enough Delta V to return Bill back to Earth. As you can see, the Mark 1-3 command pod has a heat shield on it because we were gonna try and bring Bill back. But because Da Vinci engines can't light and I didn't want to spend the time trying to do an RCS burn to return back to Earth, Bill stayed with the spacecraft going to Mars. So Bill's gonna go to Mars and we just disposed of that spacecraft with the RCS. That was easier than trying to do an 800 meter per second burn with the RCS to try and bring Bill back home. And here we go for Mars, our Mars burn. Again, uh, we had to sort of swing around to sell the fuel down for the Raptors. We don't have any more RCS, so we're gonna have to struggle through that. But it completes, uh, I think it was 1,800 meter per second transfer to Mars, and it is on its way, finally. And then suddenly another tourist popped up who said they wanted to go to Mars and so I had to create a new Mars spacecraft. This time I used a stage from the N1 rocket oddly enough but I didn't put the engine that that stage went with. I decided to use some of my shear strut engines for reasons I'm not sure about. I think maybe to annoy Pekka I doubled up the boosters on SLS to launch him. 
Yeah. So we have SLS with four boosters. May it never actually happen. <laughs> so anyway, but uh, Pekka's in that USI station module and we've got supplies and obviously a transfer stage and everything. I think we've still got a nuclear upper stage. We're definitely not using EUS on here. But I seem to recall Pekka ultimately reaches Mars in Starship with a lot of supplies. So I'm not sure what happens. We will find that out in the next video because this stream ends with us reaching orbit with Pekka and this ship. But something must happen to make it not work out. So as we separate off the core of SLS and ignite the nuclear stage that was meant as a transfer stage, we are fairly close to orbit, we should be able to potentially make a transfer like this. But we will see uh, what happens in the next video. So with that, as Becca reaches orbit around Earth, I'll say thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.